Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of um, Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, you can call us a webinar. We won't be offended. Oh, I don't know. I won't be offended. Yeah, I'm getting over it. <laughs> Um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, but they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that is no problem. You can go to our website and you can see any of the recordings of our previous sessions going back to when we first started doing this in January 2009. Um, we do all sorts of things here, a mixture of presentations, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions. Basically, if it's related to libraries, we'll put it on the show. We're not picky. <laughs> um, we do, um, we have guest speakers come in and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes do presentations. And this morning we have a mixture of that, which is typical for some of our shows. Um, once a month we do um, uh, Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Michael Sowers is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and he's sitting here next to me. Hello. You have to say hi. Yeah, that's right. We're not on camera. Right now. <laughs> I waved. Just vision it. Yeah. Yes. Picture waving. Um, and once a month, typically the last Wednesday of the month, Michael comes on and does a Tech Talk, tells you about Tech News of the Month, and usually has some sort of interview, presentation, guest speaker. Um, yes, we know it's not the last Wednesday of the month right now due to some um, uh, scheduling conflicts. Um, it got bumped up a couple weeks. Yep. So um, we are doing our Tech Talk this Wednesday. And um, Michael has a guest on the line with us, and I'll just hand over to you, Michael, to do your introduction and explain what we're doing this morning. Okay. Great, Krista. Thanks a lot. Um, yes, welcome to the, uh, the June 2013 Tech Talk. Um, I, as part of my introduction of our, of our guest speaker today, I'm going to share just two really short stories that got to um, tie this all together. Uh, I was doing an e-reader workshop last week in uh, Hastings, Nebraska. And during, we, we have the attendees introduce themselves, and one of the attendees introduced themselves as part of it. We ask, well, you know, why are you at this class? And she actually said as part of her answer, networking and getting to know other librarians. And then at the end of the day, when we kind of opened it up for questions and we were packing things up, she said, you know, I'm kind of a new librarian. What is the one piece of advice you would give me? And I said, you're already doing it network. I said, meet people, you know, I mean, you mentioned that in your introduction, it was great. And why I stress that is kind of leads into today's episode, because uh, about two, three months ago, I actually got an email from somebody who said, hey, you know, you guys haven't talked about Wikipedia in a while. Is there anything going on there? And um, I think I've at least mentioned it, but, you know, in five years, we lose track. Um, but it, it's been at least a while. And I immediately thought of somebody I know on Facebook by the name of Aaron Tay, who is a senior librarian and the e-services facilitator at the National University of Singapore. Now, Aaron and I have not met, uh, but we uh, do pay attention and comment on, on each other's stuff. I do read his blog. And so, uh, Aaron, uh, welcome to the show. And it is, I think, 11 p.m. at night there for you. You're ahead of yeah. me. Yeah, it's 11. Yeah, it's 11. Okay. Fine. I'm a night owl. <laughs> and he said, that's okay. He's a night owl. Now, um, I, I, I'm going to hand it over to Aaron in, in just a second here, but I do want to say one other thing. Um, because Aaron is just over or just under, depending on which direction you're going, halfway around the planet at the moment. Uh, we do always run tech tests with people, and we and we did run one with Aaron, and there were at points some audio issues because we're we, we're we're sending a signal around the planet here at this point, so it may happen again. Uh, don't worry about it. We're aware that it's 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 happening, and it should it usually clears itself up within just a couple of seconds. So be a little more patient with us this time around. So Aaron, welcome to the show. Um, Thanks, and Andrew. if you could start by just telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, and, and, and the library you work at, because, uh, you know, Singapore is not uh, somewhere we're all that familiar with uh, here, yeah. and, and, and if I can ever come visit, let me know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then go, go right ahead and, and uh, let us know what you have to say about libraries and Wikipedia. Hi, thanks. Uh, hi, hi, all. Thanks, thanks Michael. You did. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, my name is Aaron, and I'm a senior librarian at the National University of Singapore. Uh, we are the biggest university in Singapore. We serve about 35,000 uh, students, as well as about 5,000 faculty staff and another 5,000 research staff. And um, 
today I'm here to, sh to show you some of the things that I've uh, discovered researching on Wikipedia. Uh, I would like to stress that most the things that I show here were not actually uh, created by me, but I, I, found, I, I learned from other librarians who have been sharing the tools that they've been using um, on their blogs and other tools. So uh, what we're going to cover today is that I'm going to talk about first very briefly about the importance of Wikipedia. I'm pretty sure most of you know why Wikipedia is important. And I'm going to talk about uh, on an abstract level uh, two ways uh, libraries have been working with Wikipedia. And lastly, I'm going to show you two simple tools that you can probably adapt and use it today. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you know the importance of Wikipedia. Uh, there, was a, there was a study in 2012 that showed that when users search for Google on Google in the UK uh, for single word searches, 99% of the searches would be showing Wikipedia results. Of course, this study has been disputed and uh, some other studies put the figure at 75% or even as low as 60%. Uh, but without a doubt, we know that users Google and uh, when they Google, they tend to get Wikipedia results. Uh, but of course, uh, even the founder of Wikipedia would say that, you know, uh, for at least for college students and university students, uh, not to cite the encyclopedia. Um, but in fact, um, most of our students in NUS and Singapore, uh, we are aware, they are aware that uh, they do not actually cite Wikipedia itself. What they do is that they use Wikipedia to get an overview of the topic. And from there, they look at the references in Wikipedia. Um, a very recent uh, study, uh, project uh, information literacy has shown that over 82% of students, uh, college students, I believe in the US, they go to Wikipedia to obtain uh, uh, background information. And over 80% don't ask librarians for help. Uh, as such, this tells us that uh, Wikipedia is very important for college students uh, and I'm sure for even for the general public to look for information. Um, the problem here, of course, is that Wikipedia, uh, even their references, they have, tend to have a bias where they tend to only cite uh, free sources. And as you know, uh, the library, uh, whether it's a public library or, or academic library, has resources on various topics from books, journal articles, that are not free. So if our users, whether it's a college student or general public, relies only on Wikipedia, they will be missing out a lot of important information that is actually uh, available in our library. So the question is, what should libraries do to connect uh, Wikipedia to libraries? Um, there are generally two major models. The first way is to enable users to go from Wikipedia to the library. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk about mostly later. Uh, there are various ways of doing it. And I'll share with you at the end two ways that you can actually take it up and use it straight away from today. Okay. The other model that some libraries have done is that they try to put in Wikipedia information in the library and push users out from the library to Wikipedia. So there are actually two different models of doing it. Okay, so let me first talk uh, generally about uh, this study, which was actually done uh, in, uh, in 2005, 2004, uh, 2005. So this is a very early study where uh, the University of Washington libraries, uh, they have a digital initiative unit what they did was that they began to try to integrate their digital collection into Wikipedia. So they added links uh, on suitable Wikipedia pages uh, to link to their resources. So their resources included things like free uh, images as well as text. And uh, when they did that, they found that they were very successful in driving traffic to the site, uh, to, their, to their digital uh, site. Uh, before the study began, uh, Wikipedia as a referral was the child most important referral. And after they inserted the links into Wikipedia, it rose to the fourth position. Only Google itself, imagegoogle.com, as well as the own library website were more important in terms of driving traffic. Okay, so they were one of the first libraries to actually experiment with putting in links from article pages to their digital collection. And it proved to be a success. However, one of the major problems that we found was that um, at that time, most of the librarians had, uh, they lacked knowledge of Wikipedia norms. And uh, what they did was that they had, one problem was that they added uh, a lot of links to Wikipedia articles uh, very rapidly using unregistered accounts, which if you're familiar with the Wikipedia norms is a big no-no, and uh, their account was actually red flagged and so on. 
So uh, if you have, if you've done any amount of uh, Wikipedia editing, and I've done some uh, back in 2007-2008, you will know that Wikipedia is actually uh, editing of Wikipedia articles is a little political, and you have to be very aware of the uh, the, the policies as well as I guess uh, some amount of uh, infighting between editors. So for librarians who are not well versed with Wikipedia, if they just try to go into Wikipedia and try to edit the entries, uh, they will face a lot of pro problems. Uh, more recently, um, there was this new project that started, uh, the GLAM Wiki uh, Initiative. So GLAM actually stands for Galleries, Libraries, Ar Ar Archives, Museums. Okay, so uh, this is actually a project uh, which aims to help cultural uh, institutions to share their resources with the world. Okay, so what happens is that uh, uh, institutions would partner with uh, Wikipedia and experienced Wikipedia editors would help the library uh, strategize on how to include their content into Wikipedia. Okay. So many, many uh, libraries are on this project. Uh, the more famous ones include the New York Public Library, the British Library, OCLC, uh, the Smithsonian Arch Archive of American Arts, and so on. Okay. So one of the things that uh, they do is that uh, they have a uh, Wikipedia in residence. So what happens here is that uh, a highly experienced Wikipedia editor is actually attached and signed to either a museum or a library, and they would help the, uh, the, the institution strategize on how to actually uh, promote uh, their library in Wikipedia. So there are many things they can do, um, from organizing talks, uh, to helping coordinate the uh, additions of images or multimedia donations into Wikipedia. Uh, the British Library was actually one of the first to uh, actually have uh, Wikipedia in residence. Okay, so uh, I basically actually summarized uh, very briefly a talk uh, that was given. Uh, you can actually uh, go and watch this talk yourself. They talked about how OCLC as well as the Smithsonian Institute institution actually uh, worked with uh, Wikipedians to actually uh, connect their data and information to Wikipedia. Okay, uh, the other way that some libraries have been working with Wikipedia is that they actually put in data from Wikipedia into their catalogs. So this is actually uh, Australian uh, Union catalog, and what they do is that uh, they're actually using a system called Primos. Primo, and whenever a user searches for a certain item, like in this case the golden notebook, uh, they will have a tab which shows uh, Wikipedia entries, and when they click, it links to Wikipedia. Okay, so this is the opposite direction. They're actually pulling in information from Wikipedia to the to the catalog. Okay, so this is one this is one approach. Uh, of course, you can directly uh, put in uh, Wikipedia entries. You can catalog directly Wikipedia entries into your catalog. So this was an approach done way back in 2009 by the State Library of Kansas. I believe that they actually catalogued only uh, certain amounts of uh, Wikipedia entries into the catalog. Yeah, but of course, all this is extremely time consuming. Uh, there is a new development. Uh, there is actually a web skill discovery service uh, known as Summon, which is actually very popular with uh, many academic libraries. Uh, a 2.0 version will be launched uh, in, in fact, this month. And uh, one of the features that was included was that it would automatically, for certain topics, uh, it would automatically pull in reference information. So the reference information could include things like uh, uh, subscribed uh, data, subscribed reference online books, as well as Wikipedia. So this is actually an interesting development where if a user searches their discovery system or their catalog, uh, they would actually see Wikipedia entries appearing, which would supplement uh, the information given by the library. So this is a very interesting approach uh, that has been done. Okay, the main problem with uh, all these approaches that I've actually mentioned is that uh, they require quite a bit of investment in terms of time or in terms of money. So for example, unless your library actually bought the summon system, which is a very expensive discovery system, you probably wouldn't be able to pull in information from Wikipedia. And uh, of course you could uh, join the GLAM initiative, but again, that would require quite a lot of investment in terms of time to, uh, to work with uh, Wikipedians, especially uh, for Wikipedians in residence. Uh, but fortunately, there are actually four, uh, actually I found four ways where you can actually help your users move from Wikipedia to your library resources. 
Okay, so actually I blogged about this uh, a couple of months ago, and in fact, I guess this was a blog entry that uh, Michael was mentioning, uh, and uh, he actually invited me to give a talk, a brief talk about uh, some of these tools uh, that uh, were available that you can implement yourself, uh, with, and it doesn't require a lot of technical skill, and all you have to do is pretty much follow the instructions, and uh, you can instruct your users so that when they are on a Wikipedia page, they can go from the Wikipedia page to your library resources. Okay, so this creates a linkage between Wikipedia and the library. So uh, users won't be just limited to using Wikipedia. Okay, uh, in this blog post that I did, I actually uh, mentioned four different methods, uh, but uh, for today, I'm just going to show two methods. Okay, the two methods that are the most, I believe, the most effective. So the first method involves using a bookmarklet. Okay, uh, if you are unfamiliar with a bookmarklet, it's basically just a normal bookmark, which when the user actually clicks on it, it will carry out a certain action, okay, using JavaScript. Okay, so this is a bookmarklet. So the idea here uh, is that when you're on a Wikipedia page, uh, what you do is that you just click on the bookmarklet, and it will use the title of the Wikipedia page, and search with that title in your catalog system or your discovery system. Okay, so if if let's say you go to Google and you search for a certain topic and you land on the Wikipedia page, uh, the next thing you do is you click on the bookmarklet, it will use whatever the title of the Wikipedia page is and throw you directly to your catalog with the search results for that, that page. Okay, I'll show you live later. Okay, uh, of course, uh, a bookmarklet may not be simple to create, uh, but fortunately for us, uh, we are very generous librarians. Uh, and uh, there were two librarians, uh, Barbara Arnett and Very uh, Fort Forrester, who actually uh, came up with a bookmarklet that actually did this. And uh, they were generous enough to actually offer the source code and uh, encouraged uh, people to actually use the source code. Okay, so uh, you can actually look at the uh, blog post where they wrote about it. And uh, they actually shared the code, uh, which is over here. So if you click on the, uh, the link, you will see the code. And um, what you need to do is to just change two pieces of information. Okay, this, this bookmarklet uh, code is actually pretty simple to edit. You just need to change two, two areas. So the first thing you do, of course, is to just paste it on, a, on say, a notepad. Okay, and the first thing you need to do is that uh, you need to change this portion. Okay, uh, the clever thing about this bookmarklet is that it's actually connected to Google Analytics, and whenever the user clicks on the bookmarklet, the Google Analytics will keep track of the number of times the bookmarklet is being used, as well as the place they are on when they actually use the bookmarklet. So this gives you uh, this gives you a measure of how successful your bookmarklet is, because uh, so this has been very useful in tracking how well used your bookmarklet is. Uh, the other thing that you would need to change is the code about the search string. Okay, so this is the search string over here. Okay, so you basically need to change, do a search in your library catalog or your discovery system. Look at the URL and change this. Okay, uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so for example, in our case. Okay, I'm going to search for the word. Uh, I'm just actually doing a quick search of, of the catalog, of catalog. So I've done a search for tests using our discovery service or our catalog. And if you look at the URL, you will see that this portion is the term that you search for. Okay, and this portion is the term, is the search syntax. Okay, so all you need to do is to take the part that is the search syntax. You don't include the part that is actually the search term. Go to the code and replace everything in the quotes. Just replace this portion. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So all you need to do is replace this portion okay, with the search syntax. And the rest will be done. And of course you will want to change the Google Analytics. Uh, in this case they are, this is actually uh, their account. So what you can do is you can actually uh, create a free Google Analytics account if you want to track. And in the Google Analytics account, once you've created it, you would have a code here, okay? A property ID, a, a, a user code. So all you have to do is to simply replace the code here, okay, with your accounts, okay? 
So from, from now on, uh, whenever the user uses this code, uh, your Google Analytics account will be credited for usage. Okay, so this is very useful to tell how successful you have been in uh, the use of uh, bookmarklets. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, our library actually uh, has another bookmarklet which is also very popular, and we can tell it's very popular because we can see the the, the tracking on Google Analytics. Okay, so uh, once you have created the code, all you need to do is to actually put this, save this as a file, and uh, upload it into your server, and then and then all you have to do is to point the user to that bookmarklet. Uh, for them to use. Okay, again, uh, if you're not very familiar with uh, setting up bookmarklets, uh, again, we have very um, generous librarians. So, uh, so the University of Michigan has in fact uh, created a web page uh, with the actual code and um, the actual code for the web page, and they have even put it under uh, Creative Commons. Uh, which means that uh, if you're not familiar, what this means is that basically you can actually just copy the HTML code uh, for the whole web page. Uh, all you have to do is to make sure that uh, this link actually points to the the file that you just created, and uh, all you have to do is to just credit them, and uh, and you'll be able to uh, have a fully functioning bookmarklet page. Okay, so uh, for uh, for NUS itself, we actually created our own uh, web page. Okay, uh, we actually use libguides. I'm sure it's very popular in the US. So we actually use libguides to actually create the web page. And um, we have created all these bookmarklets. So you, uh, so I, all you have to do is, if you're not familiar with bookmarklets, depending on the browser, basically all you have to do is to just bookmark it. So in, in my case, I'm just going to uh, drag it to the search bar. So uh, I call mine Find More Bookmarklet because this is the name of our search. Okay, yours could be uh, Library Bookmarklet or whatever. Okay, so uh, let, let, let me show you how it works uh, in practice. Uh. Okay, so what happens is that um, let's just go to uh, Google. And uh, a very popular topic that we find is uh, Jap Japanese occupation of Singapore. Okay, so this is actually a big topic in uh, Singapore. So a lot of users will do a search like this, and as you expected, the first uh, entry that appears is actually a Wikipedia article. So you click on the Wikipedia article, um, you get uh, some information about the Japanese occupation of Singapore. And um, it's pretty, um, it's not too bad, uh, it's pretty decent, the amount of information we have here. But uh, most of our students are quite trained, they are smart enough not to cite the articles. So what they do is that they, they actually look at the references. But in this case, we don't see many references. Uh, and the references aren't, uh, aren't very, uh, aren't, in some cases, are not very academic. I think uh, if you look at the references, the focus has been more on free uh, sites uh, that they can access. Uh, okay? But uh, in NUS, uh, we, are actually the, we are actually the oldest university in Singapore, going back to 1905. So we have a lot of material on the Japanese occupation of Singapore. And if a user stops here, it's basically very limited uh, to what he needs. Uh. Yeah, the problem here is that many users, uh, they know that the library has information on uh, this topic, but they may be too uh, lazy to actually go back to the library homepage and then type in a search term and then look at the results. Okay? So if they have actually installed the bookmarklet, all they have to do is simply click on the bookmarklet and this, what the search does is that it automatically uh, populates the search with uh, the title of the uh, Wikipedia page. Of course, you could change this if you want to change, but let's just accept and click OK. And what's going to happen here is that you, you will do the save the search in our library catalog now, Discovery Service. Okay. And you can see that we actually have a lot of information on Japanese occupation in Singapore, including a lot of pieces, dissertations, books, journal articles, okay, we have a lot of material, we have over 6,000 6, results on this topic. So uh, this is a very convenient way to help our users um, uh, link from Wikipedia to the library collection. Okay. So this is a very new project uh, that we recently started. Uh, we haven't really started advertising it except uh, to uh, internal staff, uh, but uh, we will be we will be rolling this out slowly and trying to encourage users to use this.
Okay, so this is the first method that I've talked about how to use uh, the bookmarklet, how to create a bookmarklet so that enable users to move from Wikipedia to the um, to your catalog results. Okay, uh, but one of the drawbacks of a bookmarklet is that uh, not many users uh, would know how to create a bookmarklet, and uh, even if they have created the bookmarklet they may not remember to actually use it. Okay, So uh, there is another method, uh, even newer development that came about Okay, and um, so, uh, so this, this method is actually called uh, uh, John Mark uh, Obu, he actually came out with something called forward to libraries. Okay, As you can see from this slide, what happens is that what you do is that uh, you embed in Wikipedia itself a search box, not a search box, an information box. Okay, and the clever thing about this information box is that uh, if the user clicks clicks on resources in your library, uh, it will actually bring you to a landing page. You can choose the library that you want, and you will search that library's catalog or search system with the term Japanese occupation of Singapore. Okay, uh, he actually wrote a blog post uh, that got a lot of attention from librarians around the world because it was a very simple and easy way for users to actually connect from uh, Wikipedia to the library's uh, catalog. Okay? They did not have to know how to install a bookmarklet because the, the links were already in Wikipedia itself. Okay? Let me just show you uh, again live uh, uh, how it would look again if the user tried that. Okay, so let me try again. Uh, in this case, Japanese occupation of Singapore, so they landed on the Wikipedia page. Okay, and from here, let's say they did not install the bookmarklet. Okay, so if you scroll down to the very bottom on the external pages, you'll see this. I'm not quite sure whether you can see this. See this library resources box, and there's a resources in your library and resources in other libraries. Okay, if you click on resources in your library, what's going to happen is that uh, because this is the first time I've actually done this, uh, it will ask you to select uh, which library uh, you wish to go in. Okay, so uh, you can see that actually uh, many libraries already in the system uh, all around the world. Of course, Singapore itself, in fact, most of our major libraries are in here, and of course, the UK and the US. Okay, uh, if your library is not included in here, uh, you can actually request uh, for the uh, library to be added in. Okay, you just fill in the library name and as well as your website, and uh, John would uh, figure out the syntax of your catalog and he would actually set it up for you. Okay, so once you set up, it would appear under the cor correct country. So in this case, I'm going to set a preferred library for future searches. Okay, so I'm going to select this. And of course, I'm going to select Singapore. I'm going to do mine. And select the National University of Singapore. So once you've done that, it will actually set a cookie in your browser so that uh, we, so you will remember to use the National University of Singapore libraries whenever you search, whenever you click on that link. Okay, so let, let's, let's do it again. Okay, so now I've set uh, National University of Singapore as the default library. So when I click on resource in your library, so, okay, what's, going, what's going to happen is that it's now going to go straight to my catalog because I've chosen the National University of Singapore. Okay, so this is a very seamless way of actually connecting between Wikipedia uh, to your library catalog. Okay. So what is just required from you is to request that your system be placed here so that the system, the forwarding system knows, knows the syntax to use. And once that's done, the user can actually move directly to your catalog. Okay. And of course, if let's say you have already set your default library and you want to see what other libraries have, you can click on resources in other library and the same landing page will appear and you can see what, what is available in say, uh, uh, the National Library Board, which is our public library. Okay. So this is actually a pretty simple way of doing things. Uh, essentially, uh, this requires almost a zero technical skill. Uh, you just have to make sure that you just have to request for your library to be added. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that most currently most Wikipedia articles do not have a library resource box. Okay. So. Uh, so right now we are trying to add uh, library resource boxes 
into the articles. And of course, the good thing about this is that it's, it, it is actually it scales. So if let's say you added this, I've added, I've actually added this to this article, and therefore every library in the world uh, who's on the forward to library service would benefit from this. Okay. So uh, it, it's kind of a, like a collaborative effort. So if you put it in, say, an article about the U.S. Uh, 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 Declaration of Independence, uh, our, our, our users in Singapore would also benefit because they could also use the same link to check our library collection for articles on that topic. Okay. Uh, the other interesting thing about this system is that uh, you can actually do it for... So in this case, is the topic is the Japanese occupation of Singapore. So all you see is... Um, resources in your library. It's about. But what happens if actually you search for, say, a person? Okay, so I'm going to search for our founding father. Okay. And uh, so let's look at the library resource box. Okay, in this case, if you look at the library resource box, you'll notice that in, there's, uh, there's about Lee Kuan Yew. So it's the same. And there's another one for by Lee Kuan Yew. Okay? So if the Wikipedia article is about a certain person, you can actually change the template such that it will actually search for items by the person. So if in this case, if I click on resource in your library under by Lee Kuan Yew, okay? uh, and in this case, I'm actually using, uh, again, our library catalog, the National Museum of Singapore. So uh, the library forwarding, the Wikipedia library forwarding system actually knows the syntax. And what it does is it actually searches by the author. Okay, so it's actually an author search of uh, uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, and therefore you can see articles and books by him. Okay, of course uh, your catalog will be have to, have to be capable of doing author searches, and of course almost every library catalog in the world will be capable of doing so. And if you have set it up, a request for you to set it up, it would be capable of searching by author. So the question here, of course, is that you might be wondering, um, what? How do you actually embed the uh, library resource box? Okay, if you read uh, his uh, his blog blog post on the forward library services, he actually links to various templates. So uh, this is a template. Okay, so you can actually read through the syntax. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can do various things. Uh, if you have, uh, for example, you can actually overwrite the search. So for example, if you think that the library title, the Wikipedia title, which is used by default, is not the best search term. Uh, you can also include a library or congress uh, number, or you can enter a, a VIF number, and uh, or even a library or congress heading, subject heading, and it will use that instead of the Wikipedia title. Okay, uh, let me just show you uh, some of it. Okay, uh, essentially, uh, I give you a very simplified view of how the, how the forward to library system works. Uh, but it's actually a bit more sophisticated. Uh. So it, it may use uh, the Wikipedia title if all else fails to search. But uh, some Wikipedia articles have certain uh, identifiers. Uh, so all these, if the identifiers actually exist on the Wikipedia page, uh, the service will actually use, use those identifiers to search. Uh, if there is a Library of Congress subject heading, or if let's say you define a Library of Congress heading in your your, your library resource box, you will use that instead. And it does some amount of smart matching. So for example, if it notices that certain um, certain Wikipedia uh, pages, it may drop certain title, uh, certain articles, and if it matches a certain Library of Congress subject heading, it will use that Library, su Congress, uh, library subject, uh, Congress uh, subject heading instead. And there's some amount of, I understand that there's actually a pet, pet, pattern matching system file that he, he, John actually maintains uh, that would actually uh, figure out the, the better term to use when searching into the catalog. Okay, So uh, when you actually click on that button, it actually does a quite a lot of uh, analyze, analyzing of the right keyword to send. Uh, and of course, then after that, the user would select the appropriate library if he, if he hasn't yet done it before, or if, if in my case, we have already selected National Usability of Life of Singapore, you will use that. And then it will, of course, query the appropriate library search with the appropriate search terms. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is the example I gave earlier, where I actually embedded uh, for, the, uh, for the Wikipedia article. So you have two boxes. One you can learn, if you click on the search, you'll do a normal keyword search. 
uh, and one that actually does an auto search. Okay. And as I mentioned before, you can actually look at the uh, templates. So these are the templates for you to actually insert. Okay. Um, so one one thing uh, you might be wondering is uh, right now there are a lot of Wikipedia articles out there. So how do I decide which which of the articles were more important to actually insert the template? Okay, uh, what I basically did was that I actually uh, analyzed the most common search terms done on our discovery system on our catalog. So I looked at about a year's worth of data, uh, what people were searching for in uh, our catalog. I did those searches in Google and noticed that most of them actually, uh, the Wikipedia article actually appears first. Okay, so for those Wikipedia articles that are commonly searched for in our catalog, I would also assume they would do it in Google. And for those articles, I would prioritize and add the template to this, uh, to this, uh, uh, to this Wikipedia articles. Um, I only have, I, I only started doing this about two to three months ago, so I'm still tracking the inbound traffic uh, from Wikipedia, and uh, we as yet we still have not officially launched uh, this project, so we're just trying it out. But even now, I can see quite a few hits coming in from Wikipedia through uh, the library resource template. Lah. Okay. So uh, if you wish to help in this project, uh, what you can do is to uh, first, of course, get your library uh, in the service. So as I said before, all you have to do is to all you have to do is uh, simply uh, request for it. Okay. So so again, let me just show you. Uh, so you can just request. Okay. So it's just a very simple form. Uh, you don't even have, you don't have to enter anything, any syntax. You just enter the library website. Uh, if your library is using one of the standard uh, uh, catalogs and one of the standard discovery services, uh, John would be able to easily add uh, the syntax without any input from you. And uh, once done, the users would be able to select that as an option. Okay. Of course, the next thing to do once you once you've joined this is that of course you could just sit back and you know uh, wait for other librarians or users to add the template. Of course, we hope that uh, you can help to actually add the templates to articles that are commonly searched and used by your users. Okay, so if if libraries around the world join in and insert the template on many of the Wikipedia articles, uh, this this service become more useful. Okay, so uh, this is a bit of a collaborative project. The more librarians will help, uh, the more useful the tool becomes for all of us. Okay, because remember that uh, once you've inserted it on a Wikipedia article, any library in the world on the system would be able to use uh, it will become useful for every library on that on that service. Okay. Uh, the other thing that uh, I actually spoke to John before I actually presented on this. Uh, he mentioned to me that if you wish to access in this project, uh, to be careful about and mindful about uh, adding such uh, resources. Uh, um, as I mentioned before, Wikipedia does have some amount of uh, its own culture, and uh, if you, uh, it would be best if you could slowly, uh, you know, uh, help to improve the article, uh, Wikipedia article, and uh, and you get accepted as a as an editor uh, for that article, and then you could actually help by adding the box. Uh. Uh, so that would be uh, his advice to to join Wikipedia as a Wikipedian to help improve the article, as well as adding the research, the resource box. Okay, so um, I think it's eleven forty five. So I, I did a very quick uh, overview, uh, review of some of the tools. Uh, the two main tools that I talked about was the bookmarklet, uh, which you can actually get the source from the web page, from the blog. And the other one would be to join the forward to library services. Okay, so uh, this, this is basically all I have. Uh, you can contact me on my email. I'm erintay at gmail.com and I'm also very active on Wikipedia. And of course, I have a blog uh, where I block some of the ideas and things I found about Wikipedia. Okay, so uh, unmuted. That's all I have for now. <laughs> uh, are there any questions? All right, great. Thanks, Aaron. That that was wonderful. Um, I had I had heard about some of these issues, but uh, not uh, in so much detail. So I want to thank you. And and we didn't actually, uh, from our end, have any audio issues. You came through loud no, and clear the awesome. whole time. So, so that was wonderful. Um, so we do want to open it up to questions from the audience. I, of course, always have questions. Just ask my wife. Um, 
but if you know if the the uh, folks in the audience have questions, please, we will always defer to you. Um, and I will do want to remind everybody that uh, Aaron threw up a lot of URLs as we were going through there. Krista has been collecting them as fast and furiously as you can, and we'll get all the rest of them and make sure they're in the show notes. So if you miss the address to something, uh, we will make those available within a day or two on the archive page. So, um, Aaron, the, the first question I have while we give uh, other folks a chance to type in, uh, starting with the, the bookmarklet feature, um, I, I guess I must have more of a potential concern as opposed to a, a, a question that maybe you can respond to. In the case of a bookmarklet, you do have to kind of get that installed in a browser on a particular PC. Now, you can do it on a lot of them. Uh, but so like you would install this on, on your public access PCs, your staff PCs. Um, how do you envision letting people know that that is there since they're probably not necessarily looking at your bookmarks bar in your browser uh, and or how would you get them to install it on maybe their own PCs at home, their laptops or things like that? Right. You, you actually put a point on probably the... You did. Uh, Thing about the bookmarklet, it will rely on uh, actually teaching users to actually do it. So um, my initial thoughts about bookmarklet was that uh, it probably wouldn't be heavily used because you would have to take in the effort to do it. Uh, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. Uh, what we do is that in the National University of Singapore, we actually teach uh, information literacy classes, and we actually teach them how to create use the bookmarklets that we actually design. So uh, we have another bookmarklet, uh, a proxy bookmarklet. And we actually teach users how to actually install it. And they actually do it on the lab PCs. So we were always doubtful about whether they would actually go back home and install it on their PCs. Uh, but because, as I said, the bookmarklet actually has the Google Analytics built in. And to our pleasant surprise, the usage of the bookmarklet was extremely high. So it seems that uh, users will use the bookmarklet if uh, you can prove to them and show to them that it's popular. Uh, the other thing that we do is that we actually have a short YouTube uh, video uh, that actually captures the steps for installing the bookmarklet and of course we send it out to all through all our channels whether it's through uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and again to our pleasant surprise that video is actually the most watched uh, video uh, in our whole YouTube channel. So uh, basically what we do is that we actually let users know about the bookmarklet. There's, there's no way around it. You have to teach users how to actually uh, use the bookmarklet. Yeah. So I'm muted. Uh, I guess uh, your audience. Uh, I guess if, like in our case, our users tend to be fairly tech savvy, so they they may do so. So uh, it may vary from audience to audience. But uh, all I can say is that uh, I used to be doubtful about whether people would use the bookmarklet, and uh, right now I realize that uh, if I'm doing a, a paper coming out showing the showing that the bookmarkers are being used by users at least in the National University of Singapore. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I, I really was, um, when you got to the, it integrates with Google Analytics, I, I, I kind of like bounced in my chair. I thought that was wonderful. I didn't realize to do that. And yeah, it comes down to user education from the sounds of it. Um, so we do have a question from the audience. You want to go ahead, Krista? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we do have a question. Um, with the FTL that you've got here on this of right now, will Wikipedia yeah. users worldwide see a link to your library, Aaron's library? or just users on your campus or in Singapore only? How does that, I guess, work? OK, uh, what happens here is that this is actually on Wikipedia you did. itself. So you can actually, right now you can actually search for Lee Kuan Yew. You will see the exact same thing. Okay, so this is actually on the Wikipedia page. It's not dependent on your IP address or whether you're in campus. Uh, what happens is that when you click on the resource in your library for the very first time, it will actually ask you which library to select. Okay, and once you have selected the library, it will set a cookie on your PC. And from that point onwards, whenever you search in Wikipedia, when you click on resources in your library, it will remember that you are from the National University of Singapore and send you to that catalog. So if, if you did this right now on your PC, it would ask you which library to select. And let's say you selected some library in the US. From that point onwards, whenever a user clicks on any box that has resources in your library, it will go to that library. You will remember that library. Unmuted. I hope I was. I hope I'm clear. Yeah, great. So basically, if someone goes to this entry in Wikipedia right now, they'll see that box there, no matter where they are. Mm -hmm. 
But where, yes. the, but where the link goes will vary go. depending on right. what you choose. They will choose. have to tell it where to go. Great. Right. Thanks. And, and to which I will throw out, we, we took a look at the list of libraries. And uh, Omaha uh, is a participating library yeah. in Nebraska. Okay. Omaha Public so, Library is on the list. Uh, anybody else in Nebraska, we're going to encourage you to participate. Uh, and actually, anybody else in, the, in our audience listening to this, uh, definitely uh, please participate. Um, so... With the, the, the forward to libraries thing, so we'll, we'll jump over to, to this side of things. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask one of those questions where I think I already know the answer, but is there any way in Wikipedia to find out who or what library added the forward to a library box to a particular article? Uh, Muted. It's not possible because Unmuted. it's a normal Wikipedia. Uh, uh, we are editor editing the page, so uh, anyone could, could add the, the, the resource box. It could be a librarian, it could be a friend, user, and so on. So I don't think there's a way to tell which library added which resource box to which article. Right, that was the question, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of figured the answer was no, but maybe you knew something I didn't, so. Uh, yeah, can, can I add something? Sure. Uh, um, in fact, I, I just remembered that there is a way uh, when you set up the library to actually define an IP range and if you define the IP range and of course if the user was within the IP range and he was searching for Wikipedia, uh, that library would be automatically selected. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, so there is actually a method for that uh, which we didn't, we, we didn't do it in the National University of Singapore. Uh, but you could specify an IP range for let's say your region and whenever the user goes to Wikipedia and he's on the IP range, uh, when he clicks on that libraries in your resources, he wouldn't even have to select. He would go straight to the defined IP range, uh, defined library for the IP range. Yeah, so that's that's okay. okay. Yeah, I'm I'm just thinking about how I would use that, and I'm thinking more kind of an academic where if they're on campus, since you're going to know all those IP addresses, um, just by default, it chooses the campus. Um, libraries catalog in and then they can always change to another one if they want to uh, whereas a public library that might be a little harder to do but that's that's a great yeah. that's a great resource uh, any other uh, questions coming in from the audience yet okay. no, not at the moment um, if you have any questions type them into the questions section of your go to webinar interface or just say unmute me I want to use my microphone and I'll do that <laughs> right um, and because I've got one more question and this is kind of going to broaden it out to Wikipedia more generally than uh, the, um, the the specific tools you, you recommended um, what advice if somebody is is uh, watching this listening to the archive and thinking um, okay I do want to participate I do want to do this I want to get a little more involved with Wikipedia and you mentioned encouraging people to uh, work on the articles also, so I want to kind of go in that direction. What, if any, advice or uh, pitfalls to avoid might you suggest somebody new who's new to editing Wikipedia that they might want to watch out for uh, or avoid? Well, uh, I haven't been practicing Wikipedia for a long time. Uh, I was like fairly active in 2007, 2008. Uh, but in general, uh, I would suggest if you are editing a Wikipedia article uh, to actually uh, not make many changes at one time. Uh, typically for any well-developed Wikipedia article, uh, there are a couple of uh, Wikipedia editors who are pretty much looking over the page. So uh, if all you do is to just add the resource box to multiple boxes, uh, you will, in some cases, you may actually get uh, reverted. Uh, I would suggest that you get very familiar with the Wikipedia policies and um, the other thing, of course, about Wikipedia is that uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are, but essentially uh, in Wikipedia, uh, there, are, there are a lot of, uh, I understand that there are a lot of very highly qualified Muted. to try to edit Wikipedia, and uh, they got pretty upset because the culture of Wikipedia is basically the, they do not bow to uh, academic status. So you may be a professor or you may be a librarian, and uh, they would not, uh, they would still, you know, not, uh, they would, they would, uh, they would still follow the rules, and they would not give you any additional respect just because you are academic or, uh, 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 or a librarian. In fact, uh, to do well in Wikipedia, you pretty much have to know the rules, the policies of Wikipedia, and uh, if not, uh, you'll find yourself very frustrated. As uh, it's basically, you know, you would know 
need to know the rules and regulations pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very out of practice because I haven't been doing it regularly since 2007 or 2008. Yeah. Unmuted. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I okay, great, dabble you. in Wikipedia periodically on a, on a very small focus set of articles and keep an eye on them. And I, I would agree with all of that uh, advice. Um, I've, I've been in some situations myself about, you know, well, prove you're saying this and that. Uh, and, you know, I've written a book on the topic. I don't care. <laughs> prove it anyways. So, yeah, uh, familiarize yourselves with those policies, I think, would be a, a very good idea. Um, so, anything else from the audience? No, no, no not at this time. Um, so, Aaron, thank you very much. This this was wonderful. Um, glad glad you were willing to, to to stay up late for for our benefit. And I think you've Thanks, given Aaron. the audience and and definitely us some some really good ideas as to how we can uh, not only improve but interact with Wikipedia with the uh, knowledge and and resources that we have. I think uh, it's it's a great place to uh, kind of cross reference our, our materials. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming on the show, and I hope that people will take this information and go out there and start working on Wikipedia and making it work for us and our libraries and our uh, users. Yeah, people are using Wikipedia even if they're not using your library. <laughs> so let's get them to the library. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, switch back to giving us control of the presentation for a few minutes here. So yeah, give us just a sec to to work out those little details. Yeah. All right. And uh, usually at the end of Tech Talk, I just spend a couple of minutes talking about some news. And since I think the last Tech Talk was uh, only like two or three weeks ago instead of a full month ago, uh, I don't have a lot. But just a couple things I want to point out. Uh, one kind of e-reader announcement. One. Uh, uh, announcement of a side project we're working on with Encompass Live, and uh, a tool that I just started playing with yesterday that I think is really cool. Um, the first one I'm going to pull up here is just a little bit of news. Uh, the Barnes & Noble Nook uh, for desktop. Uh, so like you have a Kindle for desktop, a Kindle app, a read on your Kindle. Nook had the same thing. They're actually suspending their support for the PC and Mac desktop uh, reader. And what they're really encouraging people to do is to read through their web reader. And I guess the kind of the only uh, issue here that, that raises uh, concern to me is basically the web reader doesn't work if you're not online. Now, a lot of people don't read books on their laptops to begin with or their computer screens, but it is possible you, you might be using that software to read while you're offline on your laptop. And uh, that's something where you would need a connection for it to work. So just something maybe to be aware of if you're a Nook user and or have patrons that are Nook users. Um, the uh, news with Encompass Live, we have actually been working with the uh, Internet Archive to start to uh, get not only uh, all of our videos that are on uh, YouTube and our website, but also archived into the Internet Archive. Uh, the first 200 plus episodes are up and on this page and uh, we're still tweaking it uh, where some of the early episodes were having some technical issues uh, but one of the benefits here is there it's kind of a permanent archive and they offer each one in multiple uh, video versions things like that so uh, just kind of something we had a gentleman from the Internet Archive on quite a while ago and uh, this is kind of the results of that. It's taken a little while but we are working on it so just wanted to let people know about that. Um, and the other one is a tool where I actually forgot to set something up here so I'm gonna uh, work kind of uh, see how well this goes here. This is an online tool that allows you to remove the background from an image. So like say you have a picture of someone and there's a, you know trees behind them and you want to remove all the trees but leave the person. Um, and I'm going to look really quick here. I am going to kind of bring that up uh, full screen and see if there's a great sample pictures. None of these might work that well. Uh, let's use the bird. The bird where, which one's the bird? Down left. Down left okay. there. Okay, the toucan. There we go. So I'm going to drag that into this service, and it's going to load up. And I'm using Chrome here. I found it works really well in Chrome. Uh, I had some issues in Firefox, and it refused to work in Internet Explorer at all. Uh, so let's see if it even works for me here. But the idea is you can kind of see it with the, with the scribbles on the right here. 
you, you kind of scribble green over the thing you want to keep and you kind of scribble red on the things you want to get rid of and it actually does a pretty darn good job and at the moment of course it looks like it's not going to work for me. Um, so it's called Clipping Magic uh, at clippingmagic.com and it, it's a neat little tool. Uh, it takes a little practice to get used to it, I, but I did some quick and dirty samples yesterday and it actually worked pretty darn well. So if you're into graphics and um, like me, uh, something like Photoshop is, is overkill or way too complicated or you can't afford it, uh, this is a neat little free tool online that when it works, it actually does a pretty good job. Yeah, it'd be great to get for getting creative with things on your um, flyers or signs or posters or things mm -hmm. you're putting up in the library about events and stuff. Yep. So um, I guess you're just going to have to trust me on this one uh, because it, this is where I got stuck a couple of times yesterday. Uh, so it's, it's free. You get what you pay for. But when it does work, I thought it did a pretty good job. So I'm not going to belabor that point, and I'm going to end this month's Tech Talk and uh, switch it on over to Krista. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everyone, for attending this morning. Um, it was definitely a very useful um Lots of learning going on. Oh, yeah, lots of learning. Code <laughs> lots too. of uh, expl ex uh, exploring will be going on, I think, when people get done here uh, experimenting. Um, so thank you for attending this morning. Um, it has been recorded. It is being recorded. will be posted up later today, tomorrow. Um, all, the present, all of the links will be there. And then Aaron will be sending me um, possibly his uh, PowerPoint slides, and we can get those up. We'll get all that up for you in our archives that we have. So that'll wrap it up for this morning. I hope you'll join us next week. We're going to be talking about ebooks. Big pop topic, of course. Um, and um, specifically using ebooks in schools. Um, how it is, um, how you can do it, what you can do. Um, show. <laughs> And actually, we have one of the speakers is on with us. Uh, Julie Erickson is actually on the sh watching today. She just texted in, "Yeah, ebooks." <laughs> um, South Dakota um, State Library. Uh, Julie uh, Erickson and Joan Appel from there will be on with us talking about um, what's going on in South Dakota with the ebooks in their schools and how they're trying to deal with it and the, the services they're using, the platform so choices. Big set of issues there. there. Yeah. yeah. So um, that definitely will be useful to anybody who can see what South Dakota is doing and take their information and use it um, in your school um, and library. So sign up for that and join us next week. Um, also, we are on, as you can see here, and Compass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, there it goes, um, like us on Facebook, you'll get announcements of when our shows are coming up. Um, I, and now I do a reminder, as I did here, you can see, join us right now for Encompass this, oh, that's actually last week's, where's one today? Oops. Hmm. Anyway, we try and do reminders and let people know when the recordings are available, uh, things like that, so you can go on here and follow us on Facebook and um, see what you're doing if you are a Facebook user. Um, other than that, I think we'll wrap it up for this morning. Here we go. There we are. All right little delay on my laptop here. So thank you very much, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.